Would you go with me to the gospel according to John chapter 14? We'll just do the scripture reading and then we will all sit down together. You don't have to get up after that until it's time to go home. So, Yohanna ki Anjil uska chaudhma baap. John's gospel, the gospel according to St. John and chapter 14. If you don't have a Bible, grab one that's right in front of you. You don't have a Bible at home, you can take one of ours at home. Agar aapke paas apni Bible nahi hai, you can take this home. That would be our gift to you. If you're like, I don't know if I want to touch that Bible, what if someone else touched it? Do me a favor, send us a message, text us, and we'll mail you a brand new copy of your own. Needless to say, we really want you to read your Bible. Amen. Amen. Come on, I can't hear you, Pastor Shield. Amen. Amen. All right. If you have it open, say amen. John, the 14th chapter, verse 7. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I not been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own uh, initiative, but the Father abiding in me does His work. Beside me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Verse 12, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works. Say greater works. Greater works. Come on, say it again. Greater works. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with me and will be in you. Let us pray one more time. Spirit of the living God, bless our time together as we meditate upon this word. Lord, I know that this is the word that you want your people to hear. For you would not have sown it in my heart first. So I pray even now, as we go through this passage, we would understand the power and the desire that you have for us to live through these days. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The message that is on my heart, which is taken right from verses 12 and 14, aaj ka jo mauzu hai, aaj ka jo pegam, khudawan ne message mere dil mein dala hai, it is greater works. Say greater works. Greater works. Bade kaam. Come on, say bade kaam. Bade kaam. Come on, bade kaam. Here Jesus is saying, Khudamun Yesu Masi keh rahe hai, that those who are in me, wo jo mujh mein hai, they're going to do greater works. They're going to do greater works. As we read in the text, that while Jesus is preparing to complete the work for which he came to this earth, we tune into a conversation that he's having with one of his disciples. We know that this has come to the end. Before Jesus is to go ahead and complete the work for which he came to do on the cross. And in the very last moments, he's having a conversation. John captures that conversation and pens it for us in this chapter. And within this conversation, we as believers are also invited to come and tune in. Jesus says something that should catch our attention. 
खुदावन यीशु मसीह ने कुछ ऐसी बात की जिसकी तरफ जिसकी ओर हमारी तवज्जो होनी चाहिए खुदावन यीशु मसीह ने ये क्या कह दिया कि तुम मुझसे भी बड़े काम करोगे हाउ इन द वर्ल्ड डिड जीसस से टू दीज मीडियोकर मैन दैट यू आर गोइंग टू डू वर्क दैट आर ग्रेटर देन मी प्लीज नो दैट दीज आर फिशरमैन ये मछलियां पकड़ने वाले लोग हैं these are people who 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 are not as eloquently uh, uh, taught they are not uh, holders of any degrees of any sort these are common men and god is saying to them khuda mein in aam logon se keh raha hai you're going to do works that are greater than mine tum mujhse bhi bade kaam karo ge and so in order for us to see what greater work christ intends and wants us to do let's briefly survey the type of power and authority christ operated in while he was on earth is se pehle ke hum un bade kamon ke bare mein soche jo shayad already aapke zehno mein aa rahe hain wo kaun se bade bade kaam hain jinke bare mein yesu ne kaha ke hum kar sakenge let's go through aaiye ek survey lete hain ki wo khudaun yesu masi ne kaun se बड़े बड़े काम किए और रैदर वट पावर डिड क्राइस्ट हिमसेल्फ ऑपरेट इन द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग इफ यूर टेकिंग नोट इज दैट क्राइस्ट वाह ही वॉज ऑन दी अर्थ खुदाम यस्सु मसीह जब इस जमीन पर थे जीजस हैड पावर ओवर स्टोर्म्स खुदाम यस्सु मसीह का तूफानों के ऊपर इख्तियार था ही हैड पावर ओवर स्टोर्म्स It's a familiar passage but you can turn to it if you would like. This is from Matthew chapter 8 and verse 25 to 27. We read in this story is kahani mein hum ye padhte hain ke khudaun yesu masi ne apne shagirdon ko kaha let's go over to the other side. Aao dusri paar chale and while they were there the bible says Jesus went under the under the boat into a, a vip lounge and there he grabbed a comfortable my pillow and he got some sleep and jesus fell asleep aur kalam mein likha hai everyone got very afraid because the tide started to come and the winds began to blow aur jo shagird the wo darna shuru ho gaye and they went down into the cabin and they said come on man we're dying out here utho yaar hum mar rahe hain and jesus is like oh, are you kidding me Well, that's how I picture the, the the story. I don't think Jesus stood up like the Undertaker. I think he got up like the normal human would get up, and he came out and he looked the wind and the storm right in his face, and he said, "Be still." He rebuked the storm like a mother rebukes her child. Jesus did all of this, and Jesus knew what he had to do in advance. He knew what he had to do. ये मत समझिए कि जब खुदाविंद यीशु मसीह उस कश्ती में आए तो उनको नहीं पता था कि तूफान ने आना है या खुदाविंद यीशु मसीह जब तकिया लेकर नीचे जा रहे हैं तो उनको नहीं पता कि तूफान आने वाला है From the very beginning when Jesus said let's go into the other side Jesus knew the storm was coming and Jesus knew that he was going to calm the storm. One thing I want to point out here is Jesus was not surprised at what was going to happen in the future. He is already in the future with the exact same power. Amen. Koi bhi aane wali cheez jo hai wo Yesu Masih ko surprise nahi karti. It may surprise you and it may surprise me, but Jesus is not caught off guard. Another thing I want to point here is Just because Jesus stopped the storm does not mean that on that portion of the sea the storm never came again or that the water tides never rose up again. This miracle demonstrated the power of our savior so the disciples would believe or as I would say that they would have an aha moment. It was never meant for the waves to be silenced forever. This miracle happened and this is where you got to pay attention in order for us to understand what the greater works are. Ye lazmi hai ki hum is cheez ko bhi padhe 
जो शायद वहां पर कलम से तो नहीं लिखी गई लेकिन समझने के लिए कि वो बड़े काम क्या है वी गॉट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट जीजस परफॉर्म द मेरिकल इन अ मोमेंट ऑफ टाइम लेकिन इसके ये मानी नहीं कि उस दरिया पर वहां पर कभी भी उसके बाद तूफान नहीं आया होगा कि उसके बाद वहां पर और मछली पकड़ने वालों ने अपनी जान नहीं खोई होगी या उसके बाद वहां पर तूफान और आंधिया नहीं आई होंगी आर यू थिंकिंग विद मी नाउ आई होंगी जीसस डिड द मेरिकल एंड इट वाज इन मोमेंट ऑफ टाइम द सेकंड थिंग जीसस हैड पावर ओवर आई नो आई एम मेसिंग अप सम पीपल्स थियोलॉजी ऑलरेडी We'll get to it. We'll fix it up at the end. Jesus had power over shortage. Jesus had power over shortage. Is ka matlab hai ke Hudawan Yesu Masi ko jahan par binabi je kaata panda si kami padti thi. Jesus had power to make it even. Amen. I love this story. because i have many shortages in my life i love that jesus has power over shortages because i am someone who is in desperate need for i have shortages we have shortages of our time bahut hai wo yahi kehte hain hamare paas time kam hai hamare paas time ka shortage hai many have shortage of money हमारे पास पैसे की कमी है थोड़ा पैसा है हमारे पास हमारी जरूरियात और हमारा पैसा जो है इट जस्ट डजन एड अप आई हैव अ शॉर्टेज ऑफ समथिंग इन माय केस आई हैव मेनी टाइम्स शॉर्टेज ऑफ एनर्जी कैन आई गेट अ नेम मैन वी ऑल हैव दैट देन वी हैव अ शॉर्टेज ऑफ एनर्जी आठ घंटे सो कर भी ऐसे उठते हैं कि जैसे पता नहीं क्या हुआ जब तक चाय नहीं मिले होश नहीं आंद we have a shortage we have shortage of patience don't say amen you know who you are mera patience bada short hai mera short circuit hai praise god that jesus had power over shortage and he demonstrated that when he did a miracle that every gospel writer wrote in when he fed the 5000 har anjil an anjil ko likhne wale shakhs ne matthew mark luke and john they all wrote about this because they wanted us to understand that Jesus has power over shortages say amen you can find this in John chapter 6 10 and 13 i'll just want to read from verse 12 on when they were filled he said to the disciple gather all of the leftover fragments so that nothing is lost so they gathered them up and filled the 12 baskets bara टोकरे उन्होंने भरे इसके बाद जब पंद्रह हजार लोगों को उन्होंने खाना खिला दिया यूर लाइक फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड आई थॉटेंट इज पांच रोटियां दो मछलियों के साथ खुदामंद ने सब को शेयर किया और कलाम में लिखा कि बारह टोकरे उठाए गए और मैं अक्सर सोचता हूं वाई ट्वेल्व बैस्केट बारह टोकरे उठाने की क्या बात थी क्योंकि हमारे कल्चर में यह होता है कि जितना भी खाना बचता है वो पादरी के घर जाता है और वहां बारह पादरी थे द ट्वेल्व डिसाइपल्स And so Jesus started this tradition that we do even here in our churches. Jesus packed twelve boxes for each one of them. Taake koi lade na ke senior padri ko hone the junior. To is sare padri. Amen. That's just my translation of it. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's how you know where the tradition comes from. People were following Jesus all day, and realized they were famished. And he tells his disciple, "Feed these people." and one of them said you know if we had enough money hamare pure saal ki salary hamare paas hoti na even then we couldn't feed 15000 people lord i mean talk about a impossible 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 god we can't feed them we don't have the money even if we had a year's worth of money we couldn't feed them 
And Jesus said, that's okay, just bring me what you got and I'll take care of it. Because Jesus has power over shortages. Say amen. Please note, Yohanna Chadabab Chatiyai, John 6, 6, the Bible says, Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Yesu ko pehle hi pata tha ki maine karna kya hai. Yesu ko pehle hi pata tha ki mere shagirdon ke paas kuch nahi hai. Jesus already knew they had no bread. Jesus already knew what he needed to do. The Bible tells us that our Heavenly Father knows what we need before we ask. Hamara asmani baap pehle hi jaanta hai ki hum kin kin cheezon ke mohtaj hain. To phir aap pooch sakte hain ki Pai sahab agar Yesu ko pehle hi pata hai, agar baap ko pehle hi pata hai ki mere paas paise ka shortage hai, baap ko pehle hi pata hai ki mere paas uh, patience ka shortage hai, energy ka shortage hai. I've got all these shortages and God already knows. To phir main dua mujhe karne ki kya zarurat hai? Kyunki hukum hai. Amen. Argument settled. Why do we still need to ask? Because God commanded. He said, your father already knows, but ask. But ask. But ask. I don't know who this is for. This is in my notes. But some of us need to get back to praying. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to balance your book. Stop trying to get it. God is the God who will fill the shortages in our life. Or is se pehle ke aapko bhi ehsas ho that there is a shortage. God already knows. Say amen. The third thing, Christ had power over sickness. We're talking about how we're going to do greater things. Let's look at some of the things Jesus did. Christ had power over sickness. Jesus exercised power over sickness. The gospel narratives are filled of Jesus performing miracles that met the physical needs of the people. He healed the blind, he healed the deaf, he healed the lame, he made clean the lepers, he straightened the joints of a woman who was bent so much so, even if he walked into a funeral service and they brought a dead person to him, Jesus would touch them and they would come back to life. All sorts of sicknesses Jesus healed. And not just in one method. Jesus performed miracles in all types of way. For one man, he simply said, go, for your sins are forgiven. And the man got up and started to run. Another man, he said, go and dip yourselves into the water. And he was healed to another. He just spit on them. Oh, praise the Lord. See, we got this. I don't spit on you. But Jesus just spit on people and they were healed. Praise the Lord. To another, he spit on the floor and made some clay and rubbed it on the eyes of someone in all types of fashion. Jesus was healing people. One of the last miracles, which still makes no sense as how that is even possible. The Bible tells us, And Jesus just picked it up and just went and, and it, just, it just came right back to normal. That was the kind of power Jesus had. Jesus had power over sickness. He had power over abnormalities. Jesus had power over curses that followed generations. And even now, if you are struggling with a sickness, loved ones, if you cry out to Jesus, just know that Jesus has the power to do the impossible. The scriptures are full of it. We just need to turn and believe. Amen. Amen. Fourth thing, Jesus had power over Satan. Jesus had power over Satan. He had power over Satan. We read in Matt's gospel, Matt is short for Matthew, that Jesus had a face-to-face -face confrontation with the devil himself. Hasatan, Lucifer, was face-to-face -face with our Savior. The devil himself. The bad man from down under himself came face to face with Jesus. And he tried everything to get Jesus to derail the work of the gospel mission he was sent for. I want to remind you, the devil does not have power over life and death. Amen. Oh, come on. This is a good place for an amen. Shaitan ke paas kisi ko marne ki kuwat nahi. Uska sabse bada 
Hathiyar. Get this. The biggest weapon that the devil has is not the biggest weapon that he has is that he can derail you. He can take you out of focus. And he knows that if he takes you out of focus, you will ultimately self-destruct. فوکس آؤٹ کر دے آپ کو کسی کے ساتھ لڑائی میں ڈال دے آپ کو کسی کے ساتھ یہ کر دے آپ کو کسی کے ساتھ وہ کر دے آپ کا فوکس کہیں اور چلا جائے اینڈ ہی ول انٹرٹین یور امیجنیشن Because his tactic is to derail your focus. He could not diminish the purity of Jesus. Oh, amen. He could not defy his authority. Jesus had the authority and power over demons, and the demons obeyed him. De- devil and his spirit are no big deal to us. Amen. Because the power over them is in the hands of our Savior. Say amen. And so let me stop and ask you. If the devil is bugging you, اگر شیطان آپ کو تنگ کر رہا ہے اگر اس کی بدروحیں آپ کو تنگ کر رہی ہیں just cry out to Jesus because they fear Jesus. Amen. Last thing. Last thing. Jesus has power over sadness. Like what? خدا من یسو کے پاس مایوسی کے اوپر اختیار ہے Matthew 9.2, Mati 9.2, Bab Dusriyai. So he got into the boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw his faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Ek langde ko, ek char pai par, utha kar yesu ke paas lai. Here's a sick man. His joints don't move. His body doesn't function properly. And Jesus looks at him and says, hey, Cheer up, man. Oh, yeah, Hosho. Like, what in the world? Jesus is like, Be of good cheer. Get up. You're fine. Matthew 9, 22, a few verses down. But Jesus turned around and he saw her. Speaking of the woman with the issue of blood. And the Bible says he looked and he saw her. He turned around, he saw her. This is what he says. And I'm reading all this out of the New King James Version. It says, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well that very hour. Matthew 14, 27. Matthi chavis chadwambab satai sinai. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Don't be afraid. This is the story when the disciples are on the sea. And Jesus starts walking to them. And they're immediately going, this is the devil. This is some, some spirit. We don't know what's here. And Jesus is like, hey, hey, cheer up. It's me. Look to the person next to you and say, cheer up. Come on, cheer up. Some of you are like, no. Come on, Jesus told a sick person, cheer up. If you're sick, still God is saying, cheer up. Jesus told a hopeless woman, Cheer up. If you are like, I have no hope going for me, God is saying, cheer up. If you are afraid that the world is coming down and that the waters you are standing on are just not solid, Jesus is saying, cheer up. Amen. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace in the world. You will have tribulation, but cheer up. I have overcome the world. Some of us, if that's the only message you walk away with, walk away with that. Cheer up. The next time, children, I need your help to help this message go through to your parents this weekend. Through the week, 
If mommy and daddy are getting grumpy or getting angry or getting sad or getting frustrated or have this look of hopelessness, just grab them by the face and say, cheer up. And then you can add whatever you want afterwards. But at least get them there. Come on, we've got Jesus on our side. We've got the one who has the power of life and death. We got the one whom the devil is afraid of. We got Jesus who is the Lord over shortages. The best we can do is cheer up. Amen? Come on, say it with me. Cheer up. Cheer, say it so you hear it to yourself. Cheer up. Cheer up. Say it again so the devil hears you living on this word. Cheer up. Acts 23, 11. And I thought this was the most awkward place for God to insert this. But the following night, the Lord stood by him, speaking of Paul, and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. For as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. You got to understand the context here. Paul is going to Rome so he could be beaten. Paulus Rasul Romeo is liye ja raha hai ke wahan par usko maar padegi. He will be scourged with rods. Usko dande padenge. He will be abused. He will be put into prison. And God is saying, son, cheer up. Son, cheer up. Son, just as you have been here, and we know how you were here in Jerusalem. We know what you went through here. You're about to go over there. Cheer up. Cheer up. Hush ho. Hush ho. Hush ho. You know, this isn't a cliche that Jesus is telling people. This isn't an example that Jesus is sharing. This is a commandment. Because God told him first, cheer up. Jesus had power over the storm. Jesus had power over the shortages. Jesus had power over sickness. Jesus had power over Satan. Jesus had power over all of these things. But in John chapter 14, clause B of verse 12, he says, greater works you will do. How can we do greater works? How can we do greater works? Is Christ saying that we will multiply bread? Is he saying we will calm the storms? That when we pray, people will heal? That we will have authority over demons? I believe the answer is yes. The answer is yes. But I want you to get this. When we pray and people get better, that's not a greater work than Jesus. That's an equal work than as Jesus. अगर हम दुआ करें और खाना पूरा आ जाए किसी मीटिंग में, ये हुदा से बढ़कर काम तो ना ना हुआ, ये तो हुदावन जैसा काम हुआ। Are you with me? अगर शैतान हमारे हांदान पर हमारे ऊपर हमला करे और हम शैतान को दाबा मारें और वो भाग जाए, तो हमने हुदावन से बड़ा काम तो ना ना किया। हमने तो हुदावन जैसा काम किया। Are you with me? But Jesus is saying, you're going to do greater works than this. Don't stop there. Healing पर और shortages को पूरे होने तक ये तो हुदावन जैसे काम हैं। 
खुदावन से बड़े काम फिर क्या है आई लव अ थिंकिंग चर्च आई लव अ चर्च दट स्टार्ट इट स्टार्ट क्लिकिंग यूर लाइक ये आर यू देर विद मी ये आई बिलीव दैट वेन वी प्रे द स्टोर्स विल कॉम डाउन but that will not do our works greater it would make them equal i believe when we pray the sick will heal but that will not make our works greater that will make our works e- equal if we have authority over devil agar hum kisi ke andar se shaitan ko nikalte hain that does not make our work greater that makes our work equal but if we do all of these things which we are just going to be equal but christ is saying you're going to do greater works and so let's exhaust this question very quickly how do we do greater works hum phir khuda mein yesu masi se badh kar kaam kaise kar sakte hain and the first thing is because the holy spirit is filling the believers oh amen let me help you understand that when jesus completed his mission on this earth jab khuda mein yesu masi ne apni duniyavi khidmat ko mukammal kiya when his earthly ministry was finished He was crucified. He went into the tomb. He ascended on heaven. And Acts chapter two tells us, "Rasulon ke maal dusre baat mein hum parte hain that the Spirit of God was poured out upon the church. The Holy Spirit came down and filled everyone who believed. And so Jesus was localized. But now, when the Spirit came down and filled every believer, the Spirit of Jesus came inside of us." and everywhere in the world where believers are the spirit of jesus is therefore we are not localized yaad rakhe khudaavan ye sumasi ki jo khidmat thi wo ek jagah par muqarrar thi bas he was in a small portion of the land of palestine and that's where he worked but after jesus went on high the bible says we received the holy spirit khudaavan yesu ka roop hamare andar aa gaya aur jahan jahan par main aur aap hain khudaavan yesu masih hai if we are at our work jesus is there if we are in the train jesus is there if we are in our school jesus is there if we are at our any place where we are jesus is because jesus is in us the second thing we have we can do greater things because we have a greater message oh this is where we're going to end it hamare paas we have a greater message let me help you understand that when jesus healed someone they got sick again maybe not for the same illness but they that they were healed of but maybe they got sick to illnesses that were common of their time or old age jesus met their immediate need and it was so that they would believe jesus many times all people got was a physical healing जिनको भी खुदामंद यस्सु मसीह ने शिफा दी इट डज नॉट से दैट दे लिव फॉर एवर आर यू विद मी जिस जिसको भी खुदामंद यस्सु मसीह ने शिफा दी वो फिर बीमार हुए उसी बीमारी से शायद नहीं जिससे उनको शिफा मिली बट उम्र के हिसाब से या उस वक्त की जो कॉमन बीमारियां थी they got sick of that and ultimately they died khudaamand yesu masi ka najat dene ka maqsad jo tha wo sirf ye tha ke log us par imaan laaye are you with me so far this is going to help you make some sense now in the present we have the gospel hamare paas gospel hai and when i go to someone and i share with them the gospel and they become a christian that meets their permanent need what jesus did was meet their immediate need but not the permanent need the permanent need was salvation and jesus when he went and gave us the spirit and now we can go to one another and share the message of the gospel we are now doing greater work not necessarily through healing not necessarily through raising up the dead but we are doing greater work because when we can 
share with someone the gospel of Jesus and they receive Jesus, we have saved them from the perishing life of death. Amen. In John chapter 10 and verse 28, Yohanna daswam baptizmiyai. This is the words of the Lord, and I give them eternal life. And they have, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. When you have eternal life, you may die physically, but never die spiritually. Jab aapke paas najat hai, aap jism mein mar sakte hai. Lekin roo mein aap hamesha zinda hai. You will always be connected to God. Aap yasu ke saath hamesha jure rahenge. So the greater miracle is not healing that someone receives Physically, the greater miracle is the help they come to when they know who Jesus is. Amen. Jesus promised that my disciples will do greater works. We don't do greater works than Jesus. Let's be real. If we think of the works that we just surveyed, if we think of the works that we just surveyed, if we think of the works that we just surveyed, we can never do greater works than that. Come on, think with me. Who can do that? I have never heard on the news that someone calmed the storm or someone's walking on water or some, yeah, here and there you hear it, but why aren't all the disciples doing it? I tell you why. Our works are greater because of the humble nature of the instrument. The same power that brought regeneration to so many in Jesus' time now flows through us. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Now he sends us to go seek and save the lost. The greater works is not the miracle works. The greater works is that he gave us the mission that he came on. And now we get to do the same thing. That's how it's greater. We can't change someone's heart, but we can be a witness, a preacher to the greatest miracle that there is, the miracle of new birth and eternal life. You know, there are few who are anointed to do the healing. There are few who are anointed to do the works of that kind. And Paul explains that in 1 Corinthians 11, 12, 13. You can study that on your time. Bohut kam hain jinko khudaman ne masa diya hai, anointing di hai. That you can go ahead and you can heal people. But to all of us, God has given us an ability to do greater works than Him. And that is sharing with them the eternal life. We don't realize what God has given us, the privilege and the opportunity we have to serve Him. By every standard of imagination, this is the greatest thing in the world. That we could be the ones to proclaim the greatest message. To proclaim the greatest opportunity on this earth. There's nothing greater than this to do. I want you to know, church, that you and I, we can do greater works than Jesus. We can go evangelize greatly. You hearing me? Jesus could only evangelize in that one town that he was at one moment. But we could evangelize globally. That is the greater work. We could be ambassadors of Christ and demonstrate his love in every corner we are in. When Jesus showed his compassion to the woman at the well, that was in one location at one moment. But when we all in the entire church of Jesus Christ goes out and begins to demonstrate the love of Jesus, that is doing His work greater than Him. 
Are you with me? This isn't talking about being gods and cat doing this. This isn't that. This was never what Jesus was talking about. That anointing and that ministry is for the few that Jesus himself selects. And the Bible says he gives those that he, the Spirit desires. That's his decision. No, that is the selection of the Holy Spirit alone. But the greater work that we all can do is demonstrate the love of Christ. Jesus did it in a confined place, in a confined time. We could do it every day with our neighbors, with our co-workers, with where we are. Few do miracles that are similar to the ones he did while he was on earth. Tariko ko lije, bahut kam masihi hain jo wo mojizat kar rahe hain jo Yesu ne kiya. And not all of them can do all of them, but he has given each of us his spirit, and with that we can do greater works. Let's stand as we close in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, where is it that I can go and demonstrate the greater works of Christ? Shayda, is liye ruke hoye hain Khudawan ka kam karne ke liye because you're thinking you need to be able to cast out de demons and you need to be able to to preach the gospel and you need to be able to to, to, to do miracles. No. You could do greater works than Jesus because you have the Holy Spirit already in you. You can love greater than Christ. You can, you can, you can evangelize in, in, in different ways that Christ was limited to. You can do greater work of the gospel because Jesus was confined and we are not. And I tell you, loved ones, we are narrowing down on our time. It's getting harder and harder to push the gospel. But Christ has promised that we will do greater works. Father, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for this reminder that we have in Jesus. That you gave us your spirit and so we can do greater works. Lord, I pray that each one who has heard your word today, Lord, we would not shy away from demonstrating your love in our neighborhoods, demonstrating the power of Christ in our workplace, sharing with others the hope that is in Jesus. Lord, for that's the greater work, the greater opportunity we have in where Christ was perhaps confined. हम अपने मोहल्लों में, अपनी गलियों में, अपने दोस्तों में, अपने कामों पर, we can openly just speak of the love of Christ because we have your spirit and you have given us a greater opportunity to take the message of the gospel to where it was limited before. Lord, for every professional person who's here, every person, Lord, who who, who goes into work every morning, I pray that you would open an opportunity for them to share the message of God's love with their co-workers. And Lord, I pray that we would be sensitive to see your doing. That we would speak openly of Jesus' love. We would not shy away. Thank you, Lord, that you have trusted us to do greater works. Give us the ability to carry them. In Jesus' name, amen. Ahmad Abab, to Jasman Parhay, Tere Naam Paak Manajai, Tere Baad Shahtai, Tere Marzi Jasi Asman Pa Puri Hoti Hai, Zameen Par Bhi Ho. 
हमारे रोज टूट या आज हमें बख्शते हैं जिस तरह अपने कर्ज वालों को माफ़ करते हैं तो भी हमारे कसूर हमें माफ़ कर हमें आजमाइश में ना डाल बल्कि बुराई से बचा क्योंकि बादशाह कुदरत और जला हमेशा ही तरह है आमीन एंड नाउ द अमेजिंग ग्रेस ऑफ जीजस क्राइस्ट द अनफेलिंग लव ऑफ गॉड आवर फादर एंड द कम्यूनियन ऑफ द होली स्पिरिट rest with all who are gathered under this roof and all the saints of the world now and forevermore amen god bless you be safe see you next week